Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Breejax Battle Royale Season 2 Draft Analysis. I've been hyping up this league for quite some time, and that's not because, not just because we got all these insane graphics, that's not because we got some sick merch, it's not because of all that. It's because, because frankly, I I, I had a, I, I, I enjoy being at things from the start, and this is the second season, so we're pretty much at the ground level. I mean, I'm going to smack my microphone, but... Uh, welcome on out. If you guys did not just catch the uh, live stream, which was just taking place over on Twitch, you guys can go to my Twitch. You guys can check out the VOD so you guys can see the full draft recap to see all of our 16 coaches, what they drafted and kind of see how things played out. But if you guys are not familiar with this in this type of video, what I will be doing is discussing the 10 Pokemon that I have selected for this season, where I will be taking the next 12 weeks here and battling a new coach each week in an attempt to become the champion of this season. Uh, for those of you guys who just missed the last season, we just did the NCP Nimbus season three. Uh, we did make it all the way to semifinals in that. Unfortunately, we Ash Ketchumed out and we lost in the semifinals. So we are looking to come back and we are looking to smack some people around in this league. So if you guys enjoyed this type of content, make sure you guys subscribe so you do not miss out. These, we these battles are gonna be weekly. So you guys can check that out every weekend here. Pull up with the family. You guys can rock your Detroit ceilings. It's really hot out right now, so maybe not a hoodie. Maybe I'm the only insane one wearing a hoodie right now, but you can pick up a t-shirt, all that fun stuff. We got pillows. You guys can check out the description if you guys want to support some, uh, get some Detroit ceilings merchandise for this coming season. But a little bit about this league, the uh, draft requirements. So in this league, you are given 1,200 points and the Pokemon are tiered out accordingly based off of the based off the importance, the the, the value, I guess, that, that we all agreed upon as these Pokemon should be placed. And with those 1200 points, we have to select Pokemon from five total groups, uh, 200, 160, oh boy, let me pull up my, let me pull up my thing here. I believe it is uh, 200, 160 points, uh, 120 points, 100 points, 80 points, 60 points. And I believe there's also a 40 point uh, tier as well. So I think there's eight, tiers 1a 1b 2a 2b 3a 3b 4a 4b eight tiers to choose from um each pokemon has their own value assigned so we're going to kind of talk about that towards the front of the draft you obviously want to grab the important stuff the the, the heavy hitters the, the the pokemon you would intend to bring week in and week out and as you go along you pick up a supporting pokemon to accompany your goal so my goal in this was to create the best team possible and i had a i had a feeling going into this league this season i'm going to turn on my fan now because I need to buy a Detroit Stealing shirt because my hoodie is a little warm and it's July. Um, the I had a feeling I, I wanted to go into this draft with uh, two things in mind. I wanted to win and I wanted to use two Pokemon that I had just previously used in NCP Season 3. So we're going to talk about that. But going into this league, I knew I wanted to draft Alolan Ninetales again. And I wanted to try Diggersby again because I had so much fun with them both in NCP. I wanted to give them a shot. I figured with the new DLC coming out, having some new moves, some new supporting Pokemon could be really, really beneficial to the cause and really showcase off some of those Pokemon. So going into this draft, I was like, okay, I want Alola Ninetales. But in my opinion, uh, Alola Ninetales is not a first round pick. So we wanted a Pokemon that kind of supports Alola Ninetales in some way or fashion. I wanted a Pokemon that's uh, you know, I'm not drafting Bear Tick first overall. No, I'm not drafting Alolan Sand Slash first overall. But something that comes to mind is you want Pokemon with good synergy. And one of the things that occurred to me was that Alolan Ninetales did not appreciate Steel types. Uh, another thing that occurred to me is that Alolan Ninetales is very four times weak to Steel types, especially if they are fast Steel types. Now, there's not the world's utmost variety of fast Steel types, but there was a Pokemon that got introduced with the Isle of Armor DLC that does have priority Steel typing. That hits really, really hard. So I was like, why would I not want to grab that? So that way my Alolan Ninetales doesn't have to go up against it. So the first Pokemon, oh, there goes my face cam. Never mind. Oops, sorry, round's over. Um, the first Pokemon that we grabbed was actually Scissor. Scissor was a tier 1A, was the most, was in the highest valued points with 200 points. Scissor's a fantastic Pokemon. I've had the I've had the privilege of using Scissor before in um, I believe, God, what league was that? Was it was it P4G? I can't even remember when I used Scissor, but I have used Scissor before. Scissor is really, really nice. Um, it, of course, does have the four times weakness to fire. However, with the removal of hidden powers in the game, not every Pokemon is going to have access to fire coverage now to be able to bop Scissor in one shot. So 
that's really really nice um another thing that is around like i said it does have the uh it does have the priority with bullet punch the technician ability boosting its moves that are 60 base power and below by an extra 50 percent so um bullet punch becomes that much harder of a hitting move a few other moves that it does get uh are included within that little range of moves that get boosted by technician it is a very reliable defogger in my opinion it does get access to defog it gets reliable recovery and roost it gets access to knockoff, pivot, momentum, and U-turn. It's a really solid Pokemon. I know there's a lot of Pokemon that have been introduced in Generation 8 that kind of don't, that, that, that really, <laughs> I, I don't think Scissor is as prominent as it once was, but I do think in draft format, especially pairing it with Alola Ninetales, um, Scissor is probably the one Pokemon that Alola Ninetales hates the most. Out of any Pokemon that exists, I, I want to say it's Scissor or like Metagross for that matter, but Metagross isn't here, so we don't have to worry about Metagross, but um scissor for sure is one of those pokemon that is going to bring pretty much bullet punch every week so lone nine tails hates it so i wanted to grab scissor right out the gates um that being said uh we were 12th in the 12th in the draft so the first 11 pokemon got drafted we draft scissor it was back around comes back and again i said i wanted to draft the lone nine tails so we drafted a lone nine tails um it's it i really I always used to poke fun at Dan because he would always draft Hail and draft Veil and things like that. And I was like, oh boy, Dan's drafting Veil again. Shock. Oh my God, I love it. I love it so much. I love it. So we're, we drafted a little Nine Tails. Little Nine Tails is super fast. While it doesn't hit super hard from the special side, like it's got base 81 special attack. Like that's not something to go home to mom about, but it's really fast with 109 speed. It does get access to Aurora Veil, which is a, if you are not familiar, it is light screen and reflect in one. Um, so, and being able to set the hail as well for that is really, really nice. Setting the hail means we have 100% accurate blizzards as well. And um, blizzard really just hits really hard. It's, it's a really hard hitting move. It's boosted by uh, the same type of attack bonus. It is stab. So we do get to toss off stab blizzards and moon blast. We get to set up Aurora Veil. There's a few niche moves here or there each week that can be used. I believe this thing also gets heal bell as well. It's a cleric. Um, so we can, if scissors were to get burned, we can use a little nine tails to, uh, toss up a, uh, toss off a heal bell. We can also set up an Aurora veil. So that way scissors fire four times weakness to fire is no longer really that prevalent. So, um, right now on our team, we do have a very strong fire weakness though. We're not going to patch that up just yet because I said there was one more Pokemon that I wanted to use. And that is Diggersby. Diggersby is so underrated in my opinion oh my god it is it's incredible it's incredible it was 160 points so this came in at the second highest tier um same thing with the lola nine tails actually they both were 160 points so we have used almost half of our draft points within the first three picks so we do need to keep that in mind but diggersby is great diggersby has priority diggersby has huge power which doubles its attack stat so it just hits like a truck um earthquake one of the best moves in the game just to keep spamming uh so so far we have blizzard it's like a truck earthquake it's like a truck figures we can set up with swords dance with bulk up with agility it can be scarf it can be banded we ran av last season and did really well it's a really fantastic pokemon in my opinion um it does have access to spikes it does not have access to rocks so we do want to pick up a rocker at some point uh, if, if at all but um we do have the ability to set up spikes here with this thing it is an electric immunity, so it does not uh, resist the fire typing that we're looking to have. So as of right now, we're, we're trying to find something. We also really don't like fighting types either. Fighting types um, fighting types kind of do a little bit of damage to our team at this point. So we wanted something to kind of, and, and, and our speed is okay. We have a Lola Ninetales, which is really fast, but Scissor has a base 65 speed. Uh, Diggersby has base 78. So right now we're looking for something that can be a little bit faster, um, a little bit more pivotal. Um, Diggersby, a lot of these Pokemon can play different roles, but something that provides a little bit more of a pivotal role could be very, very nice. So the next Pokemon we actually end up drafting. So we have a Steel type. We have a Fairy type. Next up here, we have our Dragon type. We drafted Noivern. Noivern came out of actually tier 2B, which is the fourth highest tier at 120 points. Noivern is a Flying type and a Dragon type. Noivern has access to uh, Frisk. It has access to Infiltrator uh, and then Telepathy, but Telepathy is not that useful in singles. It does have access to Defog, uh, which is uh, super, super cool as well. So that way we don't have to rely on hazard removal just on Scizor. We do have two forms of hazard removal now. It is, it hits so hard. So it it doesn't have the highest special attack. Um, it does have what, 97 base special attack. Yeah, 97 base special attack. So it's not as high, it's higher than Alola Ninetales. So it's going to hit a little bit harder. 
um, Air Slash, Draco Meteor, Flamethrower. Uh, it gets access to moves like Super Fang. Um, it can Toxic. It can Taunt, I believe, as well. It can it can do so much. It's a it's a, in my opinion, it's a really pivotal Pokemon. We wanted a Pokemon to kind of, and it also does resist fire, which really was kind of hurting us up until this point. So we do have a fire resist on the team here now. We do have a few fast Pokemon. Um, the next Pokemon on the team that we wanted to draft is, I, I think in draft league, fast electric types are really, really a necessity. Fast electric types just hit really hard. They're really spammable once the immunity goes away because most times a electric type Pokemon, if it resists electricity or electric type, what it will, it'll it resist electricity. It's made of rubber. If it resists uh, electric typing, the electric Pokemon will also have a coverage move to handle that. So the next Pokemon we grabbed on the team, I have not used this Pokemon, I want to say since like GBA season four, like the first season I was a part of, but we're bringing, uh, we, we got Jolteon. Jolteon was a tier three B. So the third tier from the bottom at 80 points, this was in my opinion, a huge value pick. Uh, Jolteon is super fast. Jolteon hits 130 base speed. So we've got some really fast Pokemon right now. We've got Alola Ninetales at 109, uh, Noivern at 123, Jolteon at 130. Now, Jolteon does have the Volt Absorb ability. Jolteon has a special attack stat of 110. It does have access to both screens, Light Screen and Reflect. Um, it can toss off some Thunder Waves. One thing I forgot to mention about um, Noivern is that Noivern and Scissor both have access to Tailwind, so setting up speed control for that can be very beneficial for some of our hard hitters. But Jolteon just hits really hard. I mean, you toss a Choice Specs on it, you toss a Life Orb on it, you do something with it, and it just goes. You really just spam electric moves off of a base 110 special attack. Um, it does get a few niche coverage moves here and there, like Shadow Ball. It does get access to Weather Ball, so it can take advantage of opponent's weather for additional coverage moves, things like that. Um, it can also wish if I'm not mistaken. I believe it also does count as a wish passer as well. I'm going to pull that up. I didn't have all the stats up here as I was talking because I didn't think I'd need to talk about it. But you know what? We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Um, it does have the ability to wish uh, we can baton pass. I believe dry pass is allowed, so we can't pass anything stat wise. But we do have the ability to pass a wish around, which is going to be super, super nice for us. And other than that, it just hits really hard. It does what fast electric types are supposed to do. Comes in, hits hard. Um, it also does act as a cleric as well. It does have access to heal bell. So in case we don't feel like running that on Lola Ninetales, Jolteon, you really need two moves. You need electric move, coverage move, and then you can probably put two other moves on the other two slots. So it's a, it's a really nice Pokemon to have, in my opinion. I was really excited to get this fifth on our team. Because again, huge value pick. Uh, a lot of other people were grabbing other stuff. I was like, mm, Jolteon kind of just tears things up. So. We did go for Jolteon. Now, the next Pokemon on our on our on our list here, I wanted a water type. I wanted a water type, and I'm gonna talk about this. If you guys saw the draft stream, you guys saw that almost every poison type went this round, which was absurd. Because once things start to go, you start to see a trend of other coaches drafting the same. And I really wanted Tentacruel. I really wanted Tentacruel. Tentacruel was fast, Tentacruel provided a bulky water, Tentacruel provided a grounded poison type, it provided a T-spiker. It provided another form of hazard removal. It was really good. I think Tentacruel got drafted like the pick right before us. So I was like, hmm, we need a poison type Pokemon. We need a grounded poison type. I am a big fan of grounded poison types because toxic spikes suck. And I really didn't want like one of the bulkier poison types. That's just earthquake fodder, like a banded earthquake fodder. So I was like, huh, what is my next best bet here for a poison type? So I am actually really super stoked. I love our team. I do love our team. I'm really super stoked to use yet another new Pokemon that I have never gotten to use before. Salazzle. Salazzle is super fast. So we have a lot of speed on our team. Salazzle is base 117. It does actually have a higher special attack stat than Jolteon at 111. So we have two hard hitting special Pokemon. Two, two hard hitting physical Pokemon with Scissor and Diggersby as well. Some utility with Noivern and, uh, and the little Ninetales. Salazzle has a great ability called Corrosion where no matter what it is, I can click toxic against it and it gets toxic poisoned because I'm a poison type toxic always hits. That's how the game works. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. Um, we do also have access to Will-O-Wisp, uh, another really cool move that I got access to. One of the new moves this, uh, this with the DLC is called corrosive gas. It removes the held item. It's not like knockoff where it does damage, but like if I come in and you think I'm going to go for a fire move and you switch in your water type, I'm going to click corrosive gas and remove whatever item it might've had. So that's really useful as well. Um, Sludge Wave, Flamethrower, 
a few niche moves there. We do have uh, the access to, uh, I believe, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, we don't actually have toxic spikes. For some reason, I thought Salinas got toxic spikes. Huh. Hmm. For some reason, I thought Salinas got toxic spikes. Well, that's my error. So we don't have a toxic spike. But we do have a ground of poison type to absorb toxic uh, spikes. And we do have a Pokemon that is really, really fast and threatens from a side that Jolteon can't really touch. Jolteon can electric move. It can Shadow Ball, it can Weather Ball, it can Hyper Voice. Uh, poison and Fire moves, unless in the Sun with Weather Ball, it really doesn't have. So Salazzle comes in, clicks Sludge Wave, clicks Flamethrower, clicks Coverage Move, clicks Coverage Move. So, other, I, I, like I said, I'm really excited to use Salazzle, but at this point, we did, we need some bulk. We need some bulk on the team. Um, we, like, we can build certain Pokemon to take hits, but, like, Scissor's not my dedicated defensive Pokemon each week, you know? Little Nine Tails, while it has. A base 100 special defense. I'm not bringing specially defensive Lola Ninetales every week. So we needed a Pokemon that can start to take hits from both the physical and the special side. So instead of grabbing one physically defensive Pokemon and one specially defensive Pokemon, the next two focuses that we wanted to go with were Pokemon that could either be run defensively one week if need be, or especially defensive the next week, and the other Pokemon can flip and reverse that role. So the next Pokemon we have on the team um, is going to be Mandibuzz. Now, Mandibuzz was huge because Mandibuzz comes out of the uh, 100, the 160 point range, second highest tier. So we are the first, as of round seven, we're the first coach to use 1,000 out of 1,200 points. We have 200 points left to go over the last three picks here on the team. Mandibuzz provides us uh, two things, two, two really important things. It provides us with the ground immunity and it provides us with the psychic immunity. We already talked about how Earthquake is super spammable. And we also really needed a Pokemon that can take psychic hits because we've seen it before where we don't have an immunity to a certain type. That type just gets set up and goes to town. So being able to have Mandibuzz is really nice. Another good thing about Mandibuzz is that we do have hail support, or we of course have hail through Alola Ninetales. Uh, Mandibuzz does get access to the overcoat ability, which prevents damage from weather. So it does not, it does act as a defensive wall and it does not, does not get damaged by our weather, which is really, really crucial. Um, Mandibuzz is huge when it comes to bulk 110 base hp 105 defense 95 special defense and then 80 base speed so like it's not like it's that slow it's not like it's that slow which is crazy it does act as another form of hazard removal so now we have defog on scissor defog on noivern defog on mandibuzz we've got a lot of hazard support which is really great um or a lot of hazard removal which is really great because nine tails doesn't appreciate rocks noivern doesn't appreciate rocks lazo doesn't appreciate rocks uh mandibuzz doesn't appreciate rocks so being able to have all those is really nice. And then another thing that it does is that it does have access to Tailwind as well to provide some additional speed support for things like Diggersby, for things like Scissor. Just some of our Pokemon that really aren't up there in speed. We can toss up a Tailwind with those to be able to do um to be able to do a little bit more work. Other than that, um, it does get access to Whirlwind to phase Pokemon out. It can knock off, it can U-turn, it does have reliable recovery and roost. So we do have three Pokemon right now that all have very reliable recovery outside of like Jolteon's Volt Absorb. So, but that one we have to play a little bit around for. So We've got three Pokemon. I talked about how we want a secondary Pokemon to kind of be able to take some of those hits week in and week out. And a Pokemon that I thought was going to fit the bill pretty nicely was going to be Dustnor. Dustnor and Dusclops are both in the same tier. They're both in 4A, which is the second to last tier. And I've used Dusclops before. And Dusclops, you really, you, you bring it with an Eviolite every week. You do. And that's not to say Eviolite users are bad. But Dusclops really always depends on that Eevee Light. Because once that Eevee Light goes away, it just, it like, it takes those hits better. But as soon as Eevee Light's gone, boom, it's done. And people are going to attempt to knock off that Eevee Light every time. Being able to run a Pokemon like Dusnor, not only do we have a little bit more oomph for it. Um, so Dusnor has things like, it has a base 100 attack as well. Um, it does carry the 135 defense and special defense. It does have both pressure and frisk. So it does, um, what what it lacks in the ability to have access to Eviolite to gain a little bit more defensive presence, it does have that base 100 attack to be able to just kind of hit just a little bit harder than Dusclops. Uh, Dusnor also has access to um, being able to set up a trick room as well for speed control. We do have some slower Pokemon like Scissor and Diggersby. So while we've been promoting the fact that we can set up Tailwinds and stuff like that for these Pokemon, we can also set up trick room and reverse the speed tiers for a little bit as well. It can Will-O-Wisp, it can uh, trick it can toxic it can do a whole lot of stuff that bulky pokemon really need to do it can pain split it can disable it can it can it, it's it's it, it it's it does what it does what ghost types are supposed to do so um that's going to be dustnor 
The only Pokemon, so we're missing, we're missing a, a crucial typing, in my opinion. We needed, I talked about how we wanted Tentacruel and we missed out on that bulky water. We, we, we're missing a bulky water. And this next Pokemon, I was actually really psyched to draft because I've joked about it for years, whether it be in private or on streams or things like that. I have always wanted to draft this Pokemon. I have joked and joked and joked. And finally, this line of Pokemon got access to Shell Smash this generation. And I was like, you know what? That gives it just a little bit more viability. We drafted Eevee Light War Turtle. We have uh, War Turtle here. War Turtle is pure water type. It does have the ability to rapid spin. So now we do have all of our bases covered with Defog, 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 Rapid Spin. Um, it does what bulky waters do, man. It takes hits that others cannot. It does get to abuse Eviolite. So while it has base 80 defense and special defense, boosting those with Eviolite is, is tremendous to be able to help on and take those hits. Uh, we can Rapid Spin. We can Scald. And like I said, we have Shell Smash. So if, if War Turtle just looks really good when we, we're bringing Shell Smash War Turtle, man, we're going to do it. So, um, but we did need a bulky water type to help out. There's not too much to say about War Turtle, man. Um, the next pick that I got, this was predetermined long before we started the draft. I knew I wanted to get Alola Ninetales. And I knew with this next Pokemon, I wanted to use it. We tried Bear Tick out last season. I wanted the other Slush Rush abuser. Ladies and gentlemen, to round out the season two of the Breejex Battle Royale draft, we have a Lolan Sand Slash. Now, Lolan Sand Slash acts as another spinner, which is good. Um, unfortunately, it does act as our only rocker. So while our options for setting hazards are limited, we do have the ability to remove hazards everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Half our team, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Five out of ten of our Pokemon get hazard removal. So that's really nice. Um, Alolan Sand Slash does get Slush Rush, which doubles its speed in the hail, which is set by Alolan Ninetales. Uh, Alolan Ninetales also does provide the Aurora Veil to help out with Sand Slash's four times weakness to fighting and fire. Um, Alolan Sand Slash also got access to Spikes this generation, which is nice. Um, it got access to Spikes. And there are two new moves that it got access to, Triple Axle and Steel Roller. Steel Roller is a very hard hitting steel move, which is only available in terrain and it removes the terrain in an effort to use a like 120 base power steel move. Triple Axle is an ice type move. It's essentially ice triple kick. It has a 90% chance to hit three times. So first it, it'll it go to hit once. That's a 90% chance. It'll go to hit a second time. That's another 90% chance. And it'll go a third time for another 90% chance. If you hit all three, it is 120 base power ice type move, which hits so hard considering Sand Slash has 100 base attack on there. Being able to pair that with a Life Orb, Ice goes... Uh, the Pokemon that resists Ice don't appreciate the other coverage moves that Sand Slash can go for, really. So, Sand Slash just... It, I, I wanted to use it. I was like, I want to use Sand Slash. I want to click Icicle Crash and Iron Head and Earthquake and don't give a damn about it. So, that's going to be our team. Um, we have Scissor. We have Alolan Ninetales, Diggersby, Noivern, Jolteon, Salazzle, Mandibuzz, Dusnor, War Turtle, and Alolan Sand Slash. I am super excited to be participating this season. We are going up against 12 coaches in an attempt to win the championship. So if you guys, uh, if you guys are excited, if you guys enjoyed the draft, uh, let me know your guys' thoughts on our team in the comment section down below. Of course, if you guys have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns about the team, the schedule, the draft, what Pokemon is at all, uh, feel free to leave those in the comment section as well. Next week, we are going up against, uh, I believe it's Ogledina and the Miami Mets. Uh, it is going to be a weather matchup. So stay tuned for that next Saturday. All that being said, I want to remind you guys to be great and do great. And I'll see you on the next video. Later.